Remember the series on GitOps with Atlantis? On this series, I showed you how I set up Atlantis as GitOps tool to orchestrate infrastructure written in Terraform. Also on this series, I leverage on ng-rock to allow my local Atlantis to be accessible from the internet. Wouldn't it be better if I set up my Atlantis in the cloud and set up a proper, fully qualified domain name to allow my service to be accessible from the internet? This is what I'm going to achieve on this series. I am going to move my local setup of Atlantis into AWS ECS and today I will make all the necessary preparations for this migration. And so if you're new to this channel, I'm George and you're on Public Spot, a space where I show and tell practical examples and sample implementations on DevOps and cloud technology in general. On that note, let's get into it. Let's start coding. This is the GitHub repository that I created for setting up GitOps with Atlantis. I highly recommend that you go through this series on GitOps with Atlantis to have an understanding of the context on why things are being set up the way they are. And then you can head back to this episode once you are done. The first thing that I need to do is make some adjustments to the main Atlantis server configuration file. This is actually the repos.yaml inside the config directory. In order to make the configuration file more generic, I'm going to change the POC workflows and rename this to Terraform. And to make sure I have consistency on the code and configurations still align, I will head to my Atlantis YAML file, which is also in the config directory. And rename the workflow property in here from POC to Terraform. Now let's go back to repos.yaml. Notice that on the repo section of this configuration file, I have defined a pre-workflow hook and I need to update this. Firstly, what I will do is create a shell script that will set up my Terraform configuration file inside the Atlantis Docker container at startup. Let me head to my explorer and inside the scripts directory, I am going to create a new shell script and call it generate tfcrc.sh. This script is what I am going to run to set up my Terraform RC file inside the Docker container. The reason for this is that by default, when Atlantis is started via Docker container, a default Terraform RC file is created with an empty token value. So I'm going to use this new script to overwrite that default file. And so I'm going to update this file with the necessary code to create a new Terraform RC file inside the container. Notice that in this script, I am pulling a value from an environment variable called Terraform Cloud Token. I will set the value of this environment variable later on when I get to setting up the Docker container. So now that I have my Terraform RC taken care of, let's head back to my repos.yaml. I will now need to change the first part of my pre-workflow hook to execute the new script that I created. I am going to run the script inside user local bin directory inside the container. 
we will need to keep this in mind when we get to creating a custom Docker configuration file. So for now, let's pretend everything has been set up and inside the pre-workflow hook, I'm going to run the new generate TFC RC script. The other item inside my pre-workflow hook is the client configuration file or the atlantis.yaml. I need to make sure that this file is also dynamically generated. So what I will need to do is create another script that will generate this client configuration file for me. So let me head to my explorer. And inside scripts directory, I'm going to create the new script. I am going to start with a very simple setup. So what I will do is to allow this script to create the atlantis.yaml with an explicit set of contents based off what we already have inside the atlantis.yaml. And to populate the contents inside the here doc, I'm going to head to my atlantis.yaml, copy all the contents, head back to my new script, and plug that in. And now that I have a dynamic setup for my client configuration file, let me head back to my repos.yaml. I am going to update the part that sets the atlantis.yaml file and replace this with running the new shell script and run this inside user local bin. And because I am now creating the client config dynamically, I can now delete the atlantis.yaml file inside my config directory. So let's head to my explorer and delete this file. Before I start working on the next steps, I need to change the permission on my new scripts. So let me head to my VS Code terminal and make both scripts executable. And now it's time to create my custom Docker configuration file. So let me head back to my code. I am going to create my Docker configuration file in the root of my repository. Now, if I open the Docker Compose file that sits on the root of my repository, I am currently using version 0.19.6 of Atlantis Docker image on my Docker Compose. So this is the same Docker image that I am going to use as the base image. So let me copy that line and then head back to my Docker config file and set up my base image. And then I need to copy my new shell scripts into the image so they can be run when the container starts. Note that I'm executing these two scripts inside user local bin directory inside the container. And so 
I need to make sure that these two scripts are copied into the right directory inside the Docker image. The next set of changes that I need to do is to make sure that my Docker Compose file is also aligned with the changes that I've done so far. So let me head back to my Docker Compose file. And because I'm creating a custom Docker image, I need to update the Atlantis block inside this file. Instead of using the image property, I will replace this with a build property. And inside this property, I'm going to add a context property. And set the value to a dot, which indicates that I'm setting the context on the root of my repository. When I created my generate TFC RC shell script, I am referencing an environment variable called Terraform Cloud Token. And so I need to make sure that I add that in the list of the environment variables inside my Docker Compose file. On my local machine, I have an environment variable file called .env.local that contains all the environment variables that I need to set up on my local machine. I also need to update that file to add that new environment variable and set the value accordingly. Now let me head back to my Docker Compose file. And I think that is all the setup that I need to do. It's now time to verify if my changes work or it broke my setup. So the first thing that I will do is head to my VS Code terminal and run docker compose command to start only my ngrock service. My ngrow container is up. Now let me switch to my browser and access the local instance of my ngrow, which is running on port 4040. And then I am going to copy this tunnel URL right here and then access my GitHub account. Head to my settings and then open up developer settings and edit the run Atlantis app that I have set up. Head over to the webhook section and change the webhook URL. Make sure that you have slash events at the end. Save my changes. And then head back to my VS Code. And then open my .env.local file. And update my Atlantis, Atlantis URL field. And then head back to my VS Code terminal. My Atlantis service requires AWS credentials. 
So I will set this on my session by running AWS Vault. And now I am going to run Docker Compose command to start my Atlantis service. This Docker Compose run involves building of my custom Atlantis Docker image. And to prove this, if I run Docker images on this terminal, a new Docker image is added in the list. The Docker image GitOps with Atlantis underscore Atlantis is a Docker image that is built as part of the Docker Compose run to start my Atlantis service. And now that my Atlantis service is up, I'm going to head to my browser and access a pull request from one of my infrastructure repositories to test Atlantis. This is my AWS single sign-on infrastructure repository. I also have this open pull request in here. So let's go ahead and use this to verify my change. If I head all the way to the end of this page, and on the comment section on this pull request, I will initiate my infrastructure plan by adding Atlantis plan as a comment. So Atlantis plan is completed. And if I scroll up on this page, it will show me the result of the Terraform plan against my AWS SSO infrastructure. So everything still works. That's good. So my changes have not broken anything. And that's all I have for today. On the next episode, I will look into adding my Terraform code on my Atlantis repository to start the necessary work to build my Atlantis Docker image and push it to AWS ECR. So what I will do on the next episode is the consolidation of the Docker build process and Docker push using Terraform code, so stay tuned. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.